Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Early on, I have done a series of discussion on the grounding consideration. For this video, I'm going to emphasize all the different types of grounding. This will be the part 37 series discussion on EMC consideration. The early on series discussion, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look at those video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comments so that the overall standard of this channel can be further improved. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's understand what are the different types of grounding. Okay, from here you can see that there are many two types of grounding. One is called a single point, another one is called a multiple point. Okay, so why this is called a single point? Because from here you can clearly see that on this whole ground plane, you only have one single point that is actually grounded. So therefore, this is what we call a single point grounding. While on the other diagram, which is on the multiple point, from here you can see that there can be more than one point that will be ground. Okay, so this is the clear definition between single point and multiple point, which we are going to take a closer look on the next few slides. Okay, single point, okay, they are actually best suit when signal are less than one megahertz. In another word, okay, single point is basically more suitable when the frequency is not so high, less than one megahertz. Okay, the most sensitive circuit should be connected closest to the final equal potential point. Okay, so the final equal potential point is referred to this point here. So if you have a lot of sensitive device and the most sensitive circuit, you actually highly recommend to put it over here. Okay, which mentioned here, which is connected the closest to the final equal potential point. Okay, so this point number one, okay, is so called the closest to the final equal potential point. Same as this parallel connection. Okay, so basically this point should be the selected for the most sensitive circuit. The single point provide for largest amount loop current to flow. Okay, because you can imagine that the current flow, okay, basically they have the largest loop current okay, because they specifically just grounded onto one single point. Okay, they may be used between 1 to 10 megahertz okay, if the longest conductor is lambda over 20 of the highest frequency in system. Okay, which means that okay, the length of the cable is recommended to be less than lambda over 20 of the highest frequency. Okay, anything longer than this, okay, the ground potential can be a very high impedance, which we are going to take another look also. Okay, next, okay, for this single point, they can divide it into series or parallel. As you can see from here, this is basically so-called a series connection. Okay, so all of them are actually all connected in series and finally to this final equal potential point. As over here, you can see that Basically, all the so-called uh, sub-device 1, 2, 3, they basically have one wire okay, routed directly to the single final equal potential point. Okay, so this is the definition for single point. Next, okay, for multiple point. Okay, multiple point is actually preferred for frequency more than 1 megahertz. Okay, so as long as if you have design consideration for higher frequency, Multiple point is the one that you need to choose. Okay, multiple points actually minimize loop current and ground impedance of the brain. Okay, you can see from here all the subsystem they basically are all connected to the plane, earth plane or ground plane directly. So from here you can assume that they were going to have the shortest distance. So with this you actually have the minimize loop current. So this is what it means. Ground plane provide a low inductance 
ground return for all currents. Okay, the lag land must be kept extremely soft. Okay, so which means that this cable okay, is highly recommend to keep it as short as possible. So if you can put as close to the ground plane, okay, it will be highly recommend so that the length okay, will be shorter as compared if you put it further away. Okay, they basically provide for maximum EMI suppression at the PCB level. Okay, so this is a description for multiple points. Ground impedance, okay, the ground potential, okay, which means that the potential, okay, typically for a ground, okay, for example, if you have two points, they may not have equal potential point. And basically, this whether they have ground equal potential point, how much is the difference? Okay, basically, it's a function of ground current and impedance. In short, you just imagine that in a particular ground plane, okay, there are actually two potential. Typically, when you have two different potential, current will flow from the high potential to the low potential, correct? So this become an issue. Okay, so therefore, in order to make a good grounding, okay, basically, we need to ensure as little current as possible, and we want to also ensure as little impedance as possible. So this is what you want to say. Let's quickly take a look on the limitation of single point grounding. Okay, so Impedance of ground conductor increase at high frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the impedance. Okay, they can become a practically open circuit. Okay, which means that the ground plane become an open circuit when the conductor length equals to equals to two m plus one lambda over four. Okay, so this n will be one, two, three, four, etc. So basically, at these few points, they become a potential open circuit which means that a high impedance which can be an issue because we want the current to return through the ground plane and this can become a potential emc problem okay the ground conductor act as an antenna and radiate noise okay so for example typically antenna you just need to have for example a length or a cable okay, they become an antenna and basically they can radiate out signal and hence Ground light should be kept shorter than 1 over 20 lambda to prevent radiation and maintain a low impedance. Okay, so the tips is whatever that you design, the key idea is you need to keep the length which is lesser than 120 of the wavelength of the highest frequency. So with this, you actually minimize radiation, okay, which means that we can actually reduce the noise from radiate out. Okay, when a ground wire run for some distance along a ground plane or chassis before being connected, it appeared as a transmission line. Okay, so typically when you actually have so-called a cable, okay, in DC, it's actually a cable, which means that throughout the length of the cable, all the voltage, all the current, are they are all equals. However, when frequency increase, this become untrue. When you actually have a wire, okay, basically you can actually define this equivalent circuit as shown over here, as you mentioned over here. Okay, this can be modeled as an LCR network as shown above. Okay, so when you actually have a transmission line, okay, we cannot take this as cable at DC anymore. At high frequency, this transmission line can be actually characteristics as a LCR network as shown over here. Okay, the L and C component determine the characteristics impedance of the line. So in short, the value of the L and also the value of C, they basically determine the characteristics impedance of the line. As the operating frequency increase, which means that the frequency increase, the inductive reactance exceed the resistance of the wire and the impedance increase up to the first parallel resonance point. Okay, so in short here, okay, this is a inductor. If you still remember, inductor's reactance is equals to WL or 2 pi FL. When frequency increase, the reactant increase. So when the higher frequency, okay, you can imagine that the reactance of the inductor actually become more significant as compared to the R, which is the resistance of the wire. Hence, because of this, this becomes a potential issue. 
Okay, at this point, the impedance seen at the end of the wire is high, typically 100 of ohm. Okay, so when you further increase the frequency, okay, you can imagine here, the inductor reactance also increase drastically until it is many, many times bigger as compared to the resistor R of the wire. And when this actually happens, okay, the impedance seen at the end of the wire, typically they are very high and they can be up to hundreds of ohm which can become a potential issue. Remember, this is actually a cable that we want to reference to the ground and we want to keep this conductor wire okay, as low impedance as possible. But with high frequency, as you can see from here, okay, they can become an issue because the reactance of the inductor actually dominate over the resistor of the wire. After the first resonance, the impedance for a lossless circuit follow the law. Okay, so basically this is a frequency okay, versus the impedance of the transmission line. Okay, you can see from here they basically govern by this equation here. Okay, so X is basically the distance along the wire. So basically, or uh, you can imagine that when you actually travel, you can one let's say one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter, etc. So basically, you can plot this impedance versus the frequency from here you can see that they are basically we call it a parallel resonate resonator and a series resonator okay let's take a close look on this on the next slides here okay successful series low impedance and parallel high impedance res resonant frequency are found here you can see that these are also called the high impedance okay because you are going to have a high impedance and all these points are so called the low impedance which is by the series resonator as for the high impedance are basically from the parallel resonator okay, as the losses rise due to skin effect the resonant pit and now become less pronounced okay so you can see from here okay you can see that the effect of the now okay, become less severe and you can also see that the peak value for the impedance, they also become less severe when you actually move with frequency. Okay, so this is what you mean. To stay well below the first resonance, okay, so this is basically the first resonance that we want to avoid. Okay, hence, they will remain an effective conductor. So basically, if we can avoid this point here, okay, we can assume that it will be a perfect conductor, a perfect wire to be connected to the ground okay so in short if you ask me i actually prefer to use only in this range rather than this high steep slope here so if we can guarantee over here okay we can actually guarantee that it will be remain an effective conductor so how can we ensure that it will be a effective conductor okay we need to ensure that the ground wire line should be less than 120 of the shortest operating wavelength okay so with this i'd like to end my discussion okay, please help to like and subscribe once again guys thank you so much see you